Dear colleagues, good afternoon, dear guests. Now, on behalf of our School of International Regional Studies of the Faculty of World Economy and International Affairs, HEC University, I have uh, the honor to welcome all of you today at our first event, which was organized within the framework of the project International Youth Dialogue, The Voice of the Future. International Youth Dialogue, The Voice of the Future, is a project implemented by the School of International Regional Studies. Uh, the project is, made, uh, is aimed to develop uh, the contacts between representatives of young people in Russia and uh, other deep foreign countries. Our school sees the formation of mutual understanding between the young, uh, the young people of the countries of the world and Russia as a part of its social mission. Our first event organized in cooperation with the Provincial Youth Assembly Pakistan and dedicated to the discussion of Russian-Pakistan relations, problems and prospects. And today with us also uh, will be our honorary guest. First of all, I want to introduce you uh, to you our Vice uh, Rector of the HSC University, Ivan Prostakov, and give the floor to welcome speech. Ivan Valerievich, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Vishnikova. Um, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, um, I'm very glad to greet you, uh, greet all uh, participants to the round table um, in the framework of uh, this uh, initiative, um, Youth, uh, Youth uh, Dialogue, the Voice of the Future. Uh, for our university, probably it could be a kind of starting point uh, because unfortunately we have not a uh, large cooperation with uh, um, partners from uh, Pakistan. Even uh, we have uh, more than 700 uh, cooperation agreements uh, with uh, universities and uh, research institutions from uh, um, all the world, all countries, from all continents. Um, so I really hope that uh, we uh, open a new page in our international cooperation, the cooperation of our university. Uh, even uh, we have uh, uh, now almost uh, 30 students from uh, Pakistan uh, studying at uh, an undergraduate and uh, graduate programs. Uh, HSC University High School of Economics, uh, uh, in fact, uh, is a comprehensive university. We are not specialized only in economic and social sciences, even uh, uh, mostly uh, students from uh, Pakistan, as uh, many students from other countries, uh, know it as uh, an economic university and study economics uh, management. But we have some uh, students from your country studying also psychology, uh, computer sciences, uh, international relations, social sciences. And uh, we really hope that this number will be uh, more important and uh, uh, students from your country will be able to join uh, our programs also in physics, uh, mathematics, uh, uh, history, uh, uh, and so on and so on. Um, it's very important that we start this uh, dialogue and this uh, um, roundtable because uh, probably uh, this lack of uh, knowledge of each other is the main problem that we have. And uh, uh, thanks to this dialogue and th this initiative, we'll know better each other what we are doing, how we are thinking, uh, what are our opinions on uh, different common problems that our countries uh, have to face now, uh, not only in the uh, geopolitical sphere, but also in the culture, in uh, medicine, ecology, and so on and so on. I'm very glad uh, that uh, uh, the director of uh, Russian uh, Cultural and Scientific uh, Center uh, Rasa Trudinchistva and uh, the Honorary Consul uh, of Russia to Pakistan uh, also participate uh, in this meeting because uh, I suppose we can also start our joint program of cooperation in order to find 
academic partners from for HEC University in order to dispatch and to promote information about our university and the opportunities to study because we offer different uh, uh, scholarships, uh, governmental scholarships, also with the support of uh, Rosa Trudin Chistwa and uh, its office uh, in uh, Karachi, uh, but also our own uh, university scholarships uh, from, for different uh, disciplines, from, for different programs. And uh, if uh, uh, with the help of our partners in Pakistan, uh, as I mentioned, we may uh, promote more information about opportunities, uh, how to live, how to study in Moscow, in Russia, in uh, our university. Probably it will be help you to uh, make a right choice and to uh, have a good and right idea about our country, our city, our uh, education and our research. There is a plenty of opportunities. And by the way, even uh, we have to face different times now, Unfortunately, 60% of our international students, and uh, now we have more than 5,000 international students from 140 countries, as I said, from all the world. Uh, many of them, 60%, almost 60%, um, have to stay in, your, in their countries and to study online. But at the same time, we offer uh, different opportunities to our uh, future applicants to uh, know better our university through special online programs, online virtual guided tours and the possibility to attend our uh, lectures uh, uh, in our university to be a part for a short time, the part of uh, HEC University family. So uh, with, uh, I would ask uh, uh, our, my colleagues uh, from uh, Rosa Trudinchista and from uh, consulate to work together and to uh, we are ready we are open to provide you all the necessary information which could be interesting and useful for uh, young from uh, Pakistan so good work good health obviously and uh, uh, once again I hope uh, we'll start a new uh, new topic new page in our relations thank you Thank you very much, Ivan Valerich. Here, I think that uh, we will have a, a new uh, Pakistan students next year when uh, lockdown <laughs> will be over. Thank you very much. And now I give the floor to Andrei Fision, the director of the Center of Russian uh, of uh, Culture and Scientific uh, Rus uh, of uh, Rosa Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Fision, you're welcome. Good evening, dear friends, dear colleagues. I will, I will try to be very short because uh, most of the uh, words have already been said. Well, uh, for the young people, for the young generation, this kind of cooperation uh, gives a very, very uh, pleasant and interesting possibility. A possibility to uh, investigate, to explore a completely new country, a completely new tradition and, uh, uh, well, uh, gain the knowledge that they uh, cannot gain by other ways. Uh, I think thanks to the director of uh, regional studies, uh, Mrs. Vishnikola, uh, that will be that will be uh, very much possible. And so I wish you all the good future and, uh, and the good and interesting discussion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now I give the floor to Arsala Han, Honorary Consul of Russia Federation in Pakistan. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it, it is a great honor for us here. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that it's, a, it's an absolute honor for me to have had a small contribution in making this symbolic event possible today. I'm especially grateful to Mr. Andrei Fashun the director for the Russian Center of Science and Culture, um, to the head of the international department, Mr. Prostikov, and to you, uh, Mrs. Vishnikova. Um, it, this is the first time in our history that the youth of our two countries will be engaging in dialogue mm -hmm. and debating on important issues, such as politics, economics, foreign policy, youth affairs, military and technological cooperation. 
So far, the youth of our two countries are not aware of each other's views, beliefs on the matters we discussed earlier. Both the countries have so many beautiful traditions, beautiful cultural sites, values that they can share. This is an age of convergence, not divergence. That's where I really uh, commend the Russian president, President Putin. He's had a, um, a policy of inclusiveness and he's actually brought the country much closer together as opposed to a lot of other leaders who are, who've tried to be divisive in other parts of the world. This is truly an era of convergence, not divergence. We at the moment are working with the Cultural Center on a few things. Uh, fellowship programs, cultural events, business and trade, and um, educational um, sort of tourism or educational going from Pakistan to there, or we've had a few sessions with even private hospitals in which we would like scientists from Moscow to come in and be a part of the faculty and, and vice versa. There is a need to understand the importance of the digital age and the new trends of, in diplomacy and policy making. The scenario is changing. And the most important part why the youth is so important because we believe that in the postmodern world, the diplomacy is going to be led by the youth themselves. So when we address the youth, these are the future, they will set the trends, they will choose to be, uh, they will be responsible for making the world a better place or a worse place. So there's a lot of responsibility on them we can only give them the platform and try to guide them. The rest is all up to them. Um, we have an understanding, we have to understand that by dialogue and opening doors to each other, we can create a much better progressive and a prosperous world. This discussion we hope will lead to a much better understanding of each other's point of view on these important matters. We hope that this will be a useful beginning in which the youth of both of our countries will develop a better understanding of each other's concepts, points of view, and thus bringing them closer together. Thank you. Thank you very much for your warm speech. And now I give the floor to Yaha Minhan, your youth chief minister, Provincial Youth Assembly Pakistan. You are welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening, everyone. Uh, indeed, uh, I feel honored and blessed uh, to be in such seniors and uh, to be in such experienced people. Also, I am blessed and honored to be in such a crowd. Uh, I am expecting huge ahead. Uh, so basically, uh, I'll first of all start from thanking all of you, the ones who have contributed in making it happen. Uh, Mr. Andre, uh, Sir uh, Arsala Khan, uh, Ms. Uh, Vera, uh, Mr. Murad, uh, you all are the great contributors to this and you guys have struggled a lot uh, making it happen. Uh, right after that, I would also like to thank the executives of the Provincial Youth Assembly, uh, the youth ministers of the Provincial Youth Assembly who are present with us in this meeting. Uh, we have the parliamentary secretaries of the Provincial Youth Assemblies uh, and uh, they'll be sharing their views as well. I thank the speakers uh, today who are joining us as well. Uh, I'll also uh, want uh, to thank you guys uh, for everything for for everything you guys have been taking steps for for making uh, Pakistani and Russian youth united and together. Uh, this basically is going to help us a lot. And uh, actually, uh, I have huge expectations uh, that the plant we are going uh, to put in, in in this thing is definitely going to be a fruitful tree tomorrow. And uh, today, uh, basically, we'll be speaking of our friendships, we'll be speaking of our econom economy, we'll be speaking of our trade, our partnerships, our defense, uh, our military cooperations, and different uh, routes to improve this relation. Uh, I would also like uh, to introduce a few of our speakers who are from Pakistan. We have uh, Saddam, we have um, Mohammed Kamra, and we have Sadia Omar. Uh, uh, I think uh, they'll be also briefly introduced uh, by uh, Murat, uh, who will be coordinating. Uh, I wish you all uh, best of luck, and uh, I think uh, that uh, the outcome, and uh, I expect that we'll be having great platforms ahead uh, and uh, we'll, we'll be having such a result that, uh, that would 
that would only improve the youth of Pakistan and Russia, and we'll learn a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I hope that uh, our discussion today will be productive and we will find uh, the new way of cooperation. Maybe we will meet next year together, not only online, but uh, in, at our university. Maybe our students uh, will go to the Pakistan. I know that uh, the delegation of our university was going to Pakistan um, this, this, this much year, Murat. Murat is going with our students, but uh, the coronavirus virus, uh, didn't allow to go to there, but uh, to go to Pakistan. But I think that every, every, everything will be okay and we really meet not only today. And, to, uh, and now I give the floor to our young represent, representative, uh, to Murat. He is a post-educate uh, uh, post, uh, student and now uh, he will be a moderator of our second part uh, of our event. Murat, you're welcome. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rushnikov. It's a great pleasure, dear colleagues. Thank you so much to be with us today because it's so important. Uh, before we get started, our, our main part of our discussion, I want to say that uh, actually uh, we all talk about the young people is about future. But uh, sometimes it seems to me, maybe I'm not so shy, uh, that the young people is not about future, but it's about the present. And I hope that our today discussion will implement a new strategy in cooperation between Pakistani young leaders and Russian young leaders. I hope it will bring to our countries fruitful results. So, uh, I also want to thank our colleagues from Pakistani side and uh, personally my dear brother Yahya because he made a huge efforts to make this day happen, to make this event. So now I want to give floor to our first speaker. Uh, his name is Mohammed Hamran. He's the Youth Minister for Human Rights Provincial Youth Assembly of Pakistan and executive member of Model of United Nations. Uh, dear Mohammed, are you here? Hello, Mohammed. I can see him, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, maybe you can go him. Yeah, hello. Ah. Murad, he's right here. Please, the first uh, So, hello everyone, good evening, and uh, assalamu alaikum. I'm Mohamed Karan, as you said. So, as this meeting is online, so we had prepared some slides for the presentation. I guess if I could just share it with you guys. Yes, you can try it, please. Yeah, we see it. Uh, yeah. So, Sorry for thinking. So, saddled with the mistress of long Cold War era, the new alliance swaps between India and US and also between Pakistan and Russia has led the geopolitical terrains of the South Asia to be once again multi dimensionally open for both the rivals to contest. There's a famous saying that in the international relations, none is permanent friend or enemy. So when it comes to international relations, <clears throat> of course, there can be enemies who would turn up to be the best friends and there can be friends who would turn up to be enemies in the future. So this relation of Russia and Pakistan is no exception to it, of course. So uh, talking about our history, there has been a lot of ups and downs, but just a short glimpse of the political history. I have mentioned three turning points that were to me really important ones <clears throat> and i would like to share it with you guys too so the first one was in the war of 1971 where soviet union criticized pakistan's position secondly it had made uh, some bilateral treaties with india and for sure uh, it distanced both the states secondly i will for, for sure i will mention the efforts of the then prime minister of pakistan mr zulfikar ali bhutto uh, in 1974 
he who tried his level best he tried deliberately to warm up the relations between both the states and the results for example you can say that uh, the pakistan steel mill the biggest steel mill of asia by then which was set up in pakistan with the help of of course russia is a big example of those efforts like his efforts did not go in vain <clears throat> uh both the states enjoyed so close relations until 1979 but due to uh, some political reasons there was a war in 1979 and uh pakistan had to be on american block uh, it could not resist that so but it did not stop here in 2002 ahmed ali khan the then additional secretary of foreign affairs visited moscow in 2003 parvez musharraf the then uh, martial law administrator also paid a state visit to moscow and then finally in 2007 mikhail fredkov the then prime minister of uh, russia <clears throat> visited islamabad which for sure turned out to be so fruitful for for both the countries and uh, there was right so then we would talk about a uh, current political tremors so the flagship project of uh, pak china economic corridor the membership of both india and pakistan into shanghai cooperation and uh, government uh, the russo taliban reapproachment the taliban uh, the iran taliban detent and the us india harmonization are both contributing to the current political tremors being felt throughout south asia <clears throat> and talking about recent past so since the recent past pakistan has been trying its level best to revamp its relations with russia especially in 2012 they have both taken a proactive approach towards each other and to take the relationship forward to the next level and they look forward to join their potentials for example if russia has the potential and also uh, pakistan has potential why not to use both of them and why not to use them together it will be really fruitful for, for both the countries and uh, talking about all that i have a few grounds like um, and some others will be shared by my friends but uh, a few i have to share it with you guys so the first one is the military cooperation we all know that after 2018 and until now uh, joint military exercises between both the countries have been uh, taken places uh, when we see two of both the world's best armies coming together they can work a lot especially for the peace in south asia and against the war on terror but my point is that joint military exercises with youth with young soldiers it can be more useful because you know tomorrow as uh, sir said that uh, these youth are going to be diplomats these youth are going to be the ones who would run the state they would be on the front line so uh, similarly these young soldiers would be coming up in the uh, near future so joint military exercises with those young soldiers can be helpful and can be fruitful for both the countries then uh, there is an important export for defense equipments we know that russia is a good exporter uh, of defense equipments and we also know let me tell you that pakistan is the seventh largest defense uh, equipment exporter in the world so it can provide a good market to it also we have seen in 2015 that four mi 35m uh, attack helicopters were purchased so we can prefer, we can do this in the future too uh, for it will be as i said both uh, it will be it will be better for both the countries uh, one can provide its companies and like services the other can provide its uh, market so it can be really fruitful secondly sharing the space tech with you this is one of my favorite topics and uh, we know that and the whole world rather knows that russia has been accelerating in its space tech very fast even it has surpassed us too in the past future, uh, in the uh, in the recent years in the past and uh, for example i have mentioned that uh, we all know that there are a few astronauts who would go to international space station each after 6 months they have to spend their uh, spend some time there so when us makes a space shuttle and it makes a rocket to go to the international space station it spends the us spends 250 million dollars over it whereas if the same thing is made by russian tech 
it would only cost $90 million. That's much better than the 250. So nowadays, the US is also looking up to uh, Russia in that. So my point is to share the study of this, this modern technology with the young scientists and the students of this space technology. Like to show them that how we can minimize the cost, how can we make ourselves better? Because Superco is also developing now. <clears throat> And it will be much better if we collaborate and we made like the um, projects are made together by between Suparco and Roscosmos. <clears throat> political, good political ties through youth. Uh, I would then now mention our own, like for example, the provincial lead assembly, there are a lot of other assemblies. And uh, if one wants to go to, to, to see how the youth is and the future politicians, the future leaders of a state, this youth platform is the best place to find those. So our assembly and such others, other assemblies are a good place to find such youth who are going to be leaders tomorrow because almost 80% of the youth from these assemblies are the future leaders and they are the most active people of the societies. So <clears throat> giving them opportunities like mutual, the, for example, we are having this uh, conversation right now. So making such opportunities again and again with such youth is also really helpful and also are, is going to be really fruitful in future because both states, if youth combines, I think it will not take any time for both the states, both the nations to unite. And lastly, being the Minister for Human Rights, of course, this is, I think, my duty to mention uh, the human rights too. So if you provide someone an opportunity to, or any opportunity, but you do not provide them their very basic rights, I think that's not like, that's not good. He should be provided with his human, basic human rights. And by basic human rights, I mean right to speak, right to move, right to assembly, etc. So it's not all that if you provide something, uh, a few rights to someone and you say that, okay, I have provided you this, this is enough, take this and go to your home. So I said this, I, uh, I mentioned this because uh, we would be talking about many sponsored programs, joint programs, exchange programs. So talking about all these, I have, that is why I mentioned this too, uh, because like, for example, if there is a, joint program exchange program and for example some of our students would go to russia or some some of the russian students would come up here so it's not that you would provide them uh, some food and provide them with a hostel or something and their basic human rights lags so i think they should also be provided to them that is why i mentioned this thing so that is all from my side thank you so much Thank you so much. Uh, dear colleagues, I see that someone uh, used raise hand function, but uh, I want to mention that we will ask our question at the end of our discussion after all speakers uh, give their speech. And after that, we will move to our question and answer session. Uh, I should mention that this topic was really so interesting and amazing, but of course there are a lot of, uh, how to say, Difficult points in cooperation, especially between young people, but we will try to make it more efficient. And it seems to me that you mostly think like in a liberal theory of international affairs, because it's most about cooperation. But unfortunately now, also after the pandemic, we see that the world is more applied for realistic theory. So, but I hope everything will be okay. And now I want to give floor to our next speaker. Uh, it will be a little bit changed uh, and different from our uh, program because it will be Mehti Mehtiev, researcher of the Institute of Legislation and Comparative Law under the government of the Russian Federation. Mehti, please, the floor is yours. I hope that connection is good. Did you hear us? Yeah, I can hear. Everyone can hear yeah. me too. Yes. yes, everything is okay. Please, you can start the first years. Dear friends and colleagues, thanks a lot, and especially to all those who organized this event uh, for this opportunity to, to be part of this discussion. And it's a 
a great honor for me to have a chance to share with all of you my views on economic relations between our countries. It is especially important today in uh, this, this year, in the year 2020, which demonstrated that uh, humankind isn't as powerful as we used to think till today, because a tiny virus caused the biggest collapse of the global economy since the Great Depression. And uh, today's uh, economy, as we know, it's a result of a long history when we pass through lots of catastrophes, conflicts and uh, global world wars. And at the end, we found that we need to cooperate uh, all our world together and we, that we need universal organizations like the United Nations, which uh, created the most fundamental principles for the global affairs. And, uh, and including global economy. And one of these principles was that uh, we solve all our problems through economic uh, cooperation and not wars. But after 70 years, um, the 2020 came and the global economy is in a very uh, bad condition. And uh, this uh, economy, which we used to build for 70 years, it's made a collapse within a single spring this year when the pandemic hit. And uh, that was because more than 4 billion people were locked down. And uh, we again, unfortunately, see that there are a number of conflicts and protests around the world. However, today we also see, see that there are other countries which are willing and able to cooperate and uh, luckily our countries are in this list and uh, especially after the cold war when geo geopolitical and global economic agenda ag changed dramatically russia changed its economic model and it turned into the market economy and here i would mention that pakistan was in fact the first country which recognized russia as an assignee of the soviet union it was in 1991 and uh, a year later, there was the first agreement signed uh, between Pakistan and Russia, which established the most favored uh, nation regime on all types of bilateral economic and trade relations. Here, our previous speaker, Mr. Muhammad Kamran, had a very brilliant speech, so I will not repeat most of his words about the economic relations. I will just go through uh, quickly. Uh, late in 1940, there was another treaty on cooperation and principles of mutual, mutual relations, uh, which was signed in Moscow. So in 1994, we got the, those principles, which are uh, fundamental for our economic cooperation. However, despite uh, achieved agreements, the bilateral trade uh, achieved just 98.4 million in 2001, it was too less. Uh, luckily, afterwards, it increased several times, and uh, that was mostly because there was a cooperation uh, focused on uh, uh, steel mill, energy, space technologies, communication technology, etc., which has already been uh, said also. And uh, in 2010, which is a very interesting moment, uh, event, there was a meeting between Russia, Pakistan, Tajikistan, and Afghanistan where parties signed the first time the agreement on financial cooperation and uh, particularly uh, allowed on legislative level to have a uh, banking business of these four countries in the territory of these four countries. So, as you know, there are also other uh, projects, economic projects between Russia and Pakistan, which uh, include uh, the uh, gas pipeline, or well, gas pipeline which goes from Iran to Pakistan and further to India and here Russian company, biggest gas company, Gazprom was going to participate also. There are also other uh, bilateral agreements uh, within, uh, as it's already been said, military cooperation and the scientific, technical and so on. Uh, the um, construction of uh, hydroelectric power station and other infrastructure projects, energy projects, etc. etc. But what is uh, very important, I think, to speak about is how the um, economic system and the system of uh, cooperation of our countries in terms of uh, economy and trade with other countries are constructed. Uh, as we know, Russia is export-oriented country, and uh, because of that, its currency is a free-floating regime. 
sorry, free floating regime, current, uh, currency regime, uh, which means that there is no capital movement and it means that Russian ruble, Russian currency is fully convertible. So uh, at the same time, Russia is in the Eurasian economic units, integration organization in the north of Eurasian continent and uh, uh, while other countries of Eurasian Economic Union, most of them, most of former Soviet Union countries, all their uh, markets are open only within this organization, and it's uh, only Russia which opens it, uh, its financial and uh, currency sector of economy for the world. Uh, that's first of all because Russia participates also in other uh, organizations like BRICS, which is very important to mention also. There is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and uh, South Africa. And we see that Pakistan also uh, is a member of a regional organization, which is uh, South, uh, South Asian uh, Association for Regional Cooperation, which is called SAR. And there we see that um, the India is uh, one of main, uh, let's say, driving uh, economic powers, and it's a member of BRICS countries. We know that China is in the ASEAN Plus Three uh, organization, and uh, here we can say, and, and uh, others like uh, South African Republic, it's um, uh, participates in South African integration organization and so on. And BRICS is not just a number of countries. Treaties within BRICS says that these countries uh, cooperate also to cooperate organizations which they represent. And we can say that uh, Pakistan and uh, Russia can be, uh, can cooperate on different levels, not only bilateral uh, agreements, as we've said before, but also as uh, members of different uh, regional organizations where the production chain, add value chain are integrated into, uh, let's say, a cycle and some goods and services which are produced, let's say, in the Eurasian Economic Union where Russia participates. So the goods and services, which, is, which are the results of this uh, production by whole group of country can be um, subject of uh, trade with South South Asian countries, where again Pakistan is one of members, and uh, uh, the same vice versa it comes from South to Russia. Also, Pakistan, as well know, it's uh, it's located in a very interesting place. It's a country which is between Southeast Asia and uh, South Asia. Uh, Russia is not so far, even though we don't have a border. But uh, it means that uh, Pakistan can be. Uh, a country which would play a very crucial role in uh, transportation of goods and services. And uh, here we see that there is, uh, Russia also uh, participates uh, a lot in this thing when goods and services uh, transported from Asia to Europe, some of them goes to tr through Trans-Siberia, etc. But we also know that there is a tendency in the world that in order to solve our economic problems, we need to cooperate on also from north to south or from south to north, I can say. So here, the, here we see another framework within which our countries can cooperate and uh, have a future. And uh, uh, in conclusion, uh, what I want to say once again is that uh, we not just can, but we will have to cooperate because there are tendencies in the world where organizations, regional organizations cooperate with each other, where we see the uh, production chain, uh, uh, chains and add value chains, which are located in different uh, regional organizations and uh, they are going to merge and we will see the integration of integrational organizations and uh, here we have a chance to have uh, cooperation in the future in terms of economy on different levels, including bilateral, regional, and in global level. And uh, I hope that uh, if uh, may, may God allows us that our discussion and our friendship here will be even a tiny, but still a contribution to the wealth of our countries. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope my speech wasn't too long. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Mehdi. It was uh, brief. It was uh, exactly about the topic. But uh, if you let me, I want to ask maybe, it's not a question, it's maybe more, more about comments. Uh, as I know, you work in uh, legislative and cooperative law uh, institute. And if I'm not mistaken, you talked about some era, uh, cooperation with different countries uh, like Iran and other countries. Is there any cooperation legislative or legislation between Russia and Pakistan? Maybe you will provide any example or maybe you have some experience. Uh, I particularly, particularly, I, unfortunately, I don't have any experience in uh, any legislative uh, uh, projects with uh, Pakistan, but uh, I work uh, on uh, regional uh, organizations like South Asian Cooperation and uh, Eurasian Economic Union. And uh, there I can say that uh, the world changed dramatically and uh, we see that uh, we see the fragmentation of global economy into regions right now. So what was the main point of my speech is that even if we on some point don't cooperate uh, directly with Pakistan, we will always be involved into some international production chain, international add value chain, where the goods and services produced as a result of this chain uh, will be exported and imported to or from Russia or Pakistan. So we are anyway connected to each other but not directly, sometimes indirectly. And uh, there are a number of uh, bilateral uh, agreements which uh, our colleagues said before, and uh, I also mentioned, especially on projects like infrastructure and so on. But this is how the global system looks like and uh, the framework for integration already exists and cooperation between our countries. So thank you so much, Mirti, uh, and I hope that you mostly with the previous speaker talked about economic cooperation between Russia and Pakistan. I hope that uh, inter-Afghan peace conflicts, uh, the peace process will succeed and maybe it will lead to some future economic flourish. Dear colleagues, please turn off your microphone. Because... Uh, so now I want to put Yeah, I'm so sorry for some technical problems. Uh, even now it's a little bit. please. So now I want to give floor to our next speaker from Pakistani side. It's Saddam Sheikh. Uh, he's a, his position Minister of Environment and Climate Change, uh, Provincial Youth Assembly of Pakistan, District Coordinator of Sustainable Development Goals, Academy of Pakistan, and Executive Committee, uh, Committee Member of Engineers, Grand Alliance Pakistan. Please. Yeah, here is. Hello everyone and have a good evening. I'm very really grateful to have you people here for a great cause of Park Russia relationship. It is indeed a great opportunity for youth of both countries uh, to be together and think of the future, uh, the prosperity of both countries. I have uh, just made a short presentation, which I would like to uh, present here, yeah, a youth relationship uh, in Park Russia future together. Uh, I will start with a few lines that development of technology and communication have made the world uh, a global village, which has its own pros and cons, but through learning to live together, we can make the world a better place to live. Uh, then uh, I will uh, just go uh, to the next slide. 
uh, which is, uh, which gives a background of partnership relations and it is uh, really patchy and a bit uh, It is inconsistent with the term of unsystematic foreign policy decisions and uh, our governments are less cooperative, less progressive and having short term. Uh, the world uh, is now changing, uh, the allies uh, are now changing due, due to security, economic and political allies which, which, which means uh, any uh, from abroad impact and the thinking of corridor which is which is the best for countries, the Afghanistan stability and joint military alliances. Uh, the, as the world dynamics is changing and the Russian aims uh, for uh, the Asia is becoming different, so, so the relationship of both the countries are now uh, taking its words towards positivity and towards uh, its development. Uh, uh, I will now give you uh, a brief about the Pakistan, that Pakistan of the youth population uh, who are uh, below 30 years of age. This is a big asset for Pakistan. Pakistan has the world deep sea port Gawadar. Um, it is the largest pool of scientists uh, and engineers, it is it is best uh, place for uh, tourism uh, and agriculture country. And there are also various uh, importance of Pakistan, which make it prominent in the region. Uh, in the past, uh, uh, between our countries, which has some causes, these are uh, like uh, there was plus deficit uh, between us. Uh, our people are uh, less communicating with each other due to uh, different cultures, uh, economic imbalances, uh, and lower trade investments uh, among both the countries. Uh, do you hear me? Okay. Yes, one of my friend, the, one of person uh, was asking for the low internet. So sorry for interruption. Um, there, there were some causes uh, which is just in front of you. You can see that the technological gaps, low trade investment, and the biggest thing, uh, the the trends uh, of uh, the diversion towards capitalism and communism. Uh, these were uh, like the basic uh, of, of some of the causes which uh, make us distant. But as the the trends and the, the dynamics is changing so so these things are not uh, having uh, the same values and we are just talking uh, for for humanity and for ec economic prosperity and mutual cooperations mm, what areas we can improve together uh, first of all the basic thing is the people people of both the countries uh, as, as everyone know that uh, the people of, uh, of any region of any place have a lot of powers they can uh, change the government they can make the government uh, so people to people linkages are very much important and i am blessed uh, uh, to say that uh, like uh, we are for the first time the youth of uh, pakistan and uh, the people from russia are now linking together for for the better future uh, investment on human human development this is an area uh, to be improved together uh, the political relationships regional stability economic prosperity science and technology and uh, trade investment these are some areas which i have identified through my research uh, that, that we should go for that and we should work together uh, for these areas what are uh, the mutual co uh, areas of cooperation what we can uh, uh, we can uh, like uh, cooperate, what we can uh, do for uh, each other. Uh, this this may be uh, of uh, area in education and research, which is uh, pretty low as compared to other countries like uh, China is nowadays giving thousands of scholarship uh, in even uh, in the mid of the, the year and in the start of the year. Uh, all all is going on the Chinese scholarships, the US scholarships, but uh, for on Russian side, we are not uh, noticing uh, such thing, which is which is just a gap. So, so the, in these areas, both the student Russian can come here. Uh, we we should learn each other's language. We should we should be able to speak together. We should you know, like talk uh, each other's cooperation, trade, investments, tech.
CPEC is is really a huge project for uh, Russia and Pakistan uh, and the whole world, which can make uh, our uh, life uh, changed. So uh, these were some areas of cooperation. Now there are some areas in which Pakistan can help Russia. Uh, uh, as you can see, uh, slide, uh, we, we just uh, say that greatly uh, needed because there's there's no uh, other uh, shortest way uh, to 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 other countries for their in business purposes for. Uh, economic booster. So Russia can, uh, Pakistan can give Russia uh, an access to warm waters by um, the, the great idea which is just launched and being heard uh, by uh, our people that Russia and Pakistan are thinking of Russia and Pakistan economic corridor. This will be a great opportunity which, which Pakistan can uh, help Russia. Inclusion of CPEC uh, in, uh, like uh, we can uh, include Russia in CPEC project for trade and investment in Pakistan. Uh, we can do military cooperations uh, we, 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 as we do uh, uh, after 2014, uh, the, the Russian which, which made Russia to, to tilt towards uh, the Asia, South Asia. Um, Russia has another uh, problem of drug trafficking uh, from Afghanistan, which Pakistan uh, can help in uh, stopping uh, the drug uh, is more is the IS uh, from Afghanistan, which is which is the threat for both the countries. Pakistan can cooperate in that area too. Right, uh, there are some prospects in which Paki uh, Pakistan, Russia, and China uh, can can join together uh, and they can work together. This is the world is now become bipolar and uh, we are going to uh, make an Asian bloc, which may be uh, a good prospect for both of the countries. The, the military technology future agreements uh, with, with allies replacing the West, uh, energy uh, supply to allies and access to warm waters. Now, uh, uh, who can bring us closer together? Uh, this, is, this is really important that the, that the youth populace of both the countries, they can help, uh, uh, both the countries to come together by uh, mutual exchanges, especially in the field of education, culture exchanges. Um, we, we both should promote each other language like uh, Pakistanis should go for Russian languages and the Russian can learn Urdu language. So this is really very important. We should promote uh, education, um, uh, promote sports of both the countries, the, uh, especially nowadays, uh, social media is ru ruling over the world. So social media is really very important. Uh, we as youth of Pakistan, we have high ambitions to have friendly relation with each other and with all the countries of the world. And, and we, we more use social media. So this youth of Pakistan can help uh, in making good relations and projecting it through social media platforms. And also the last thing we can uh, publish articles for promoting Pak Russia relation. So th this was uh, uh, like the role of youth, which is really very important. Uh, and in, in the final uh, slide, I would just say that uh, no power, uh, no concept of power, but only mutual cooperation in economic, political, and uh, uh, social sector. Uh, we can, we can okay. just make long-term policies for both of the countries uh, and so we can make uh, great and we think uh, some internet issues. I can't see you, but I think I'm delivering it uh, by now. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, I would really uh, look forward for uh, acceptance of my suggestions. And I will, uh, I aim that youth of Pakistan will cooperate fully with Russia. Uh, to make the plan successful for the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Saddam. It seems to me that one of the important points we will outline today is that uh, Russia and Pakistan need to cooperate to create more uh, effective connection, internet connection, because we see, despite this economic and technological adv advancement in our countries, still now we have some problems with internet. So now I want to give floor to our next speaker. Uh, it will be uh, David Sikhuralidze. 
Uh, he's a vice chair of Eurasian Research Institute for Peace and Development. Sorry, for Peace Development, uh, David. Uh, it means that you are here. Fine, thank you so much. Well, Murad, today you just not only had Voice of the Future Institute, right? But you make the voice heard and the face is seen. So it's very nice. Uh, we're very nice to see so many friends from Pakistan, actually. The last time when I had a chance to talk, to listen to, to so many colleagues from Pakistan was three years ago during the World's Youth Festival in Sochi. Probably some of you were present there, or you must have some friends who went there and had a chance to talk to the youth from all over the world. Actually, it was really very informative for me to listen to all the speakers. We saw detailed descriptive data about the history of the Russian and Pakistani relations. And those goals which we, like probably politicians or people in education can promote to make the cooperation between our countries more efficient, more productive. Actually, probably we have to stress the point that we like politicians, educationalists, uh, we have our own stake here, right? That probably were the most internationalized part of our countries, of our communities. And probably people who are academics in other spheres, like technicians, engineers, chemists, and so on and so forth, uh, up till now, they do not have those chances as people from political science, international relations have, right? So probably in order to make those dialogues most efficient, uh, well, we should plan several steps here, kind of just to give general theoretical description of potential cooperation and actually promote it. I mean, probably uh, like if we can start is for example, involving uh, young academics into mutual research projects. Like if we take international relations, I mean, there must be dozens, if not hundreds of young PhD students who research almost the same subject, almost the same topics in their dissertations now, right? Living in Pakistan and in Russia, maybe climatic science, right? Or geology or geography or economics, any other, right? But if we probably can pair, can sort of couple those young, and not necessarily only young researchers from both countries, it can give some stable point of cooperation here, right? Generally, professional communities, if we speak about not only political scientists or international relations specialists, but some other very specific domains can be of great help. Uh, well, as an example, I can uh, speak about educational community. Uh, there is such an NGO in Russia, Russian Accreditation Union, and this NGO was able to host a conference of all Asia Pacific educationalists and the specialists in accreditation about two years ago in Moscow. And probably it was some kind of other chance to meet so many friends from Pakistan, right? So if we just uh, use our social networks, use our social capital, uh, well, probably to make kind of specific targeted calls to those specialists who we think, right, will uh, benefit from international cooperation here, it will be of great import importance. Well, we also can speak about um, general, probably framework of sustainable development goals, right? It's very probably fortunate way to create cooperation communities because sustainable development goals of the UN, it's sort of kind of alphabet, right? It's sort of a yeah, probably mm, can be understood and received and endorsed all over the world. So there are committees, right? There are NGOs which promote in their activity sustainable development goals, right? And those goals are very specific, which is great, right? Those goals have some certain KPIs and we probably can organize uh, at different levels, right? There's a cooperation of those NGOs. And if those NGOs can organize like mutual projects, right? Where they help each other or they showcase the best cases, right? And actually high school of economics has already shown itself as a flagship in this, uh, in this 
in this respect, right? Start in this great conference, great meeting, right? So we can probably other Russian universities can also join in their turn. And it can be probably more or less a regular, uh, regular event when different academics from different spheres are able to talk, to exchange information and probably some new researches and to make it mm, specific, to make it regular, to make it measurable, right? So we kind of haven't like participated here can in the next time kind of measure our key pie, right? So now we meet and we get this general information. So probably in a year time or probably half a year time, we meet with the same or more or less the same community again. And we can measure how many steps we have taken as a community, right? Because now having spent about two hours together, we are more or less community. So guys, was great just to listen to you. And I want to give the floor to the next speaker. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, so I should mention that David, one of the most famous and most effective public diplomats in Russia because uh, within his organization, he made a lot of different projects uh, oriented on some social mission of our society because it's so important to create a community of young people and to make them closer to each other. So thank you so much, David. It's a great honor to see you, to listen to you. Now I want to give floor to our next speaker. Uh, the last one from Pakistani side, uh, Sadia Omar, uh, legal advisor, Pakistan Legal Aid, uh, free legal aid for women who cannot afford, vice principal at Allied School, executive member of Pakistan Academy of Rural Development. Please. Hello. Hello. Alaikum. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you, but we can't see you. I said you, after this event, we should cooperate on making some good internet connection. Yes, Sadia, are you here with us? Uh, hello? hello? Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you all of you for inviting me uh, to join this platform. Uh, although indeed it's a very good opportunity for me and for all my Pakistani fellows as well to join such an international uh, conference. Hello, uh, sorry I have some internet issue over here. So yeah, we see you and we hear you. <laughs> okay, fine, fine, fine. Yeah. Actually, I was not able to see anyone, so that's why it was quite embarrassing for me at that time. Fine. Uh, well, I would like to start uh, from. Uh, like as our senior is taught, does Akhila Khan uh, that uh, of both the countries, Pakistan and Russia, we both have like the beautiful, rich traditional and cultures, right? Like me, I belong to Pakistan, and we have four in provinces in Pakistan. Every province have different culture, and it's a very rich culture, right? So, uh, like from the beginning of this conference, of this uh, dialogue, we have started talking about the past, we have started talking about the wars, and then we started talking about somehow the education as well, and some like youth exchange and, and the different things as well. But the thing is that we should also focus on these things, like we should start conducting some cultural exports in Pakistan and Russia. Like I being a Pakistani, I know showing things about my Pakistan culture, but I don't know anything about Russian culture and their traditions. So um, with the help of these exports, we'll get to know about our cultures, our uh, traditions, and then like, uh, <clears throat> like uh, in this thing, we can also help. Sorry, hello? Am I fine? Okay. Fine. Yes, yes, everything is okay. Let's okay. continue. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, and then I would like to also talk about the both countries. Like Russia has its own language and Pakistani, we, our national language is Urdu, but we are talking in English, which is which does not belong to any of us, either to Russia, 
needed to Pakistan. So I think that we should start language exchange as well, like the Pakistan youth should come over there and we should uh, learn the Russian language and uh, and the Russian language, uh, like as all my previous uh, fellow uh, Sudham Hassan also uh, talk about this, that we should talk about like sorry. Mm -hmm. Please continue. I don't think it's okay. We hear you. Okay, actually, it's my first time of talking on uh, Zoom radio, so that's why I'm getting confused. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, like the current pandemic, and then I will start talking about the current pandemic, like which in which we got to know about the importance of humans like how many we've lost so many people in during this pandemic so my basic uh thing was we did like the both countries should come forward on medical field like we are only talking about the promotion of military promotion of the financial so we should also take care of all humans so to, for the take care of human as i know that the russian has also started working on vaccination for the pandemic coronavirus, right? And the president of Russia has uh, tested on himself. So, like, obviously, uh, like people will go on that. Why? It's just because of trust. Like, um, the president can use, you know, like, China has also launched the uh, vaccine, but they haven't used that. Uh, like, the president of that country haven't used that thing. And USA is also talking like they are also um, trying to use it. But okay, it's so, like my thing. Like we should start medical suit. In medical suit, we should uh, talk on R and D, that the research and uh, development. Like um, both the countries should contain the further pandemic. Like we should search for the. Uh, uh, sorry, can I take a glass of water? It's okay, please continue. Everything is clear. Okay. Okay. And then we should <clears throat> and then we should talk on and uh, we should work on SMEs as well. SMEs is basically the um small and me small medium enterprises like during pandemic nobody they was able to come outside their home. Like if the pandemic started again and we were not able, nobody was uh, able to come out of their home. So what the people will do? Like obviously neither the Pakistani will be able to go to the Russia either to any other country. Neither the, any other country will be able to come here and join us and talk about uh, and to do anything for the country. So we should start working on educating our people on SMEs as well. The small and medium enterprises that they can start the small industries at their home, the home based industry. So they can export those things as well and they can help the economy of your countries as well. So that was also one of the uh, most important things that I thought that we should work on this. The fundamental rights that uh, everybody have to like economical and the healthcare issues, all of these issues are the burning issues that we should work on. So uh, I think now Yes, you want to continue or to chat? Yeah, basically uh, the main thing that I want you to say that is like the both countries, we are discussing so many things. So the, we should not only talk about the things, we should take initiative. The main things I have seen, I have go to this so many countries. Uh, I have like, I have been so many countries and so many conferences. I have attended workshops as well. And in those countries, people are talking about so many things, like we will do this and that, and people should take uh, this and uh, this sort of initiative. People should, everybody's talking about should, 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 but nobody's taking the initiative. Nobody's even going through the further follow-up. Nobody's even taking the follow-up. So this initiative that we have started, we should start taking the follow-up as well. We should go for the, like, it has to be in future. We should, uh, uh, like, what the country should uh, mutually start working on it. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was I'm sorry a great for the embarrassment, actually. I was not able to, like, uh, 
uh, my family bring me here so that's why i was not able it's a public place and people around me are looking at me you know scaring like why she's talking in english so that's how being <laughs> like so don't worry like, you know yeah. uh, it's about more about young dialect and we should be yeah, more okay. flexible we should be more uh how to say tolerant to every obstacle and we know that during the pandemic the situation is also be changing exactly it has to change so that's why we have to work on uh so many things the r d the cultural expos the visa free yes the main thing was the uh, visa free we the asian country should also work on one thing as well that we should start visa free like when we arrive the country then on like e-visa should be based on our um on our uh, passport like um, yeah. as other countries uh, like um, european countries they have visa free uh, um, policies as well when they reach the country so then uh, they take the e visa on their um, passport so it was it can uh, like increase more uh, what we say like it can increase more tourism in our country like russia has also very beautiful places in uh, the country and we also so the tourism can also increase Thank you so much, Sadia. Unfortunately, we have run out of time and we should give the floor to our next speaker because we yes, sir, have thank some... you so much. Welcome, welcome. Thank you to be with us. So now I want to give floor to our last speaker from the Russian side, another charming and beautiful uh, lady. Uh, please, Ksenia Koltonova. Uh, she's a head. Um, <laughs> Dear colleagues, please turn off. I'm so sorry. Oh, hello for everyone. Okay. Yeah. Hi, please. Um, well, I'm glad to welcome you from the forum site of the National Technology Initiative. Uh, today is uh, the huge uh, forum, uh, huge Russian, all Russian forum, and uh, uh, I'm glad to welcome you from this side. Um, in our century, high-tech century, the world is becoming closer and closer. Uh, it almost seems like a small community. Europe international cooperation plans a vital role in tackling global issues. Uh, global cooperation is really fundamental. I will give you some um, cases why global cooperation is extremely significant. The term youth is uh, used to refer uh, to the most dynamic age group. Uh, young people constitute a progressive, a progressive part of society. They tend to be receptive to development, uh, experience, changes, and new conditions and ideas. It is well known that uh, nowadays uh, a technology startup launched by one person or uh, two can uh, eventually turn into a multi-billion dollar company and transform um, our sectors of uh, uh, global economy. Uh, we are sure that uh, Pakistan is aware that its uh, young people are uh, its most valuable resource. Both our countries should take care to improve uh, the level of um, youth education and develop the success of its students, especially in the field of high technology. It is very important to development uh, to develop technological cooperation, uh, youth technological cooperation, exchange uh, successful cases and introduce new technologies uh, in new sectors of economy, like uh, uh, like national technology initiatives. Uh, Pakistan and Russia should work together to create free trade zones, uh, which provide more opportunities for youth business communities, for uh, youth uh, business projects um, of both countries. I believe that uh, our countries have a huge potential for bilateral cooperation, because nowadays uh, it is a post-COVID uh, uh, area, post-COVID time, so we should be and should work together. Uh, the most promising uh, business projects, uh, we believe, uh, to date uh, in the following areas. Uh, energy, agricultural projects, chemical products, 
textile products and uh, the new business of uh, Marinette, Technet, uh, and uh, we believe that it is Foodnet. Uh, we are always open and ready to uh, consider uh, your proportions for cooperations. So uh, my speech is <laughs> turned to be ended. Uh, thank you so much, Ksenia. Uh, thank you to be with us now. I know that you are so busy now because Ksenia now at another event also. Thank you for your time. So, dear colleagues, uh, I think it's time to go to the next part of our uh, event. It's, it will be question and answer session. So now you can uh, uh, use raise your hand function and I will give you an opportunity to ask your question. But please uh, follow the queue and just, I see that Harris uh, want to ask him a question. But before I give floor to our uh, speakers, I mean our participants, I want to maybe outline some main issues. Uh, as you can see, as we can see, then all of these speakers, they outline the main priority area of our cooperation. Uh, they talk more about economic cooperation. I mean about financial aid, maybe some uh, startups and something like that. So I really believe that it, it can be uh, some effective way to strengthen our cooperation, I mean, between Pakistan and Russia, and especially to make all our countries and also region to flourish. So now, please, uh, Mr. Harris, you can ask your question. <clears throat> Hello, can I be heard? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, actually, it's, actually, it's not a question, but a short contribution, which I want to make to the platform. Uh, first of all, thanks to all for making this happen. Uh, uh, we are very glad that we have been given the opportunity to know the views of the other side. Uh, uh, talking about the ground realities, Pakistan uh, is facing a big problem in the sense of poverty. Uh, and uh, uh, Kamran have talked a little bit about it, but I want to raise the issue that uh, uh, in Pakistan, we are facing poverty, uh, which is a big problem, as poverty doesn't only bring, uh, you know, su su sufferings to the people who are poor, but also sufferings to the other civilized people who have money in their hand because we see crimes uh, happening every day, uh, snatching and uh, theft and robbery. So I would like this uh, platform to grow into, you know, uh, the thing to work on and uh, uh, the poverty, how to cope with poverty, because Russia faced this uh, in the era of Stalin, where Russia faced an extractive political and economic system. Pakistan is facing it in these days. We are facing an extractive economic system, but uh, we want to cope with it and uh, would like uh, the, uh, the Russian side to hear them, to hear their views, uh, what they say about how to cope with poverty. And I think we have the, the, the place where I am sitting, this is Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, we are having, uh, we are gifted with every kind of resource, but uh, what we don't have is refined machine. And, uh, you know, Russia uh, having a, a greater machinery can provide us with the machinery and can work on it. And uh, this, this first meeting was more about formalities, but, you know, uh, I expect, uh, and I wish it will grow into something, uh, you know, in which we can talk about the burning issues of both the nations. And thanks to all of you. Uh, and I would like this platform to work on this problem uh, that Pakistan is facing poverty as our PM uh, visiting to China. Uh, also there, he presented this issue and asked the Chinese uh, to help us and to tell us the ways in which we can cope with it. Because uh, it, is very shock it will be very shocking for you guys that uh, only 2% of our uh, population uh, gets an admission or gets to study uh, in universities. And uh, it is very fortunate for us all, you know, sitting here that we can speak English and without, uh, you know, uh, education, we cannot speak English too and would not be able to talk to you guys and to share our ideas. So 2% of those people, and we are fortunate that we are, most of us are graduates or undergraduates here uh, talking to you guys. So I think, uh, as Gandhi said, that we cannot teach morals on an empty stomach. Uh, therefore, we cannot solve most of the issues if we do not solve the basic issues we are facing, that of food, water, uh, uh, residence, and clothes, which is, you know, uh, the, the issues of the poor. And uh, this is what I want this uh, platform to grow into, to talk on this burning issue we are facing in Pakistan, as Russia have faced it 
uh, before the war in Afghanistan, its extractive system. Many talk that Russia, you know, the the you, Soviet Union, uh, you know, it was struck by the Afghanistan war, but before it was struck by the extractive economic system it had. So it changed, and under Putin, uh, uh, you know, it has uh, accelerated uh, its econo economy and has uh, now Russia is a power in the world. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for your contribution. It's really so great. And I want to really, you know, it's not about our event. It's not about just words, about some expression of views. It's, it will be, it will lead to some real acts. And today we can cooperate because now, even now, you can send your contact to our colleagues from Russian sites. You can exchange your contacts, you can speak, talk, how to resolve it. And it should be also mentioned that our international GIAF dialogue, uh, based on sustainable development goals, uh, because you know, the main ideas of world of international organization is to achieve sustainable development goals. If we will overcome this, we will resolve all of our, all our problems within the whole world. I hope everything will be okay. So thank you for your contribution. Now I want to give floor to our uh, Dr. Vishnikova. She is not only the head of the uh, School of International Regional Studies, but she is also an academic supervisor of this project. Please, Dr. Vishnikova, the first yours. For thank question. you very much, dear colleagues. It it was really interesting and. I've learned new uh, things and now I'm not only happy, but I'm calm for our future because uh, this uh, forum, this uh, platform showed us that the cooperation between our countries uh, will be uh, strong and will be, uh, will, de will be developed by youth, by youth, by, uh, by your force, by your intentions. And these intentions maybe can help us to um, to solve some uh, general pro ge general pro uh, not problems but issues in our cooperation. And now uh, you, as a young people, don't have uh, maybe enough force to make uh, political decisions. But as a young people, you can offer, you can make a proposal for your government. Uh, I mean, uh, from Russian side, our young people uh, you often write uh, some proposals for, uh, often write some proposal for our government. For example, how to develop uh, the cooperation between Middle East countries and Russia. And now I'm, I, I think that I have a proposal to make a work group between um, the young people of our countries to, uh, pre uh, to prepare such, uh, such uh, document and to send such document to the government of uh, the Russia and Pakistan. And maybe uh, not only to write in this document uh, such fact as we want to uh, cooperate and we want to uh, develop our cooperation, but to write a road map, map how, how to do it, how, in what, in what way we should go uh, to make our uh, cooperation strong, stronger. I mean that uh, today we discuss uh, such uh, general problems as human rights, and I have some comments uh, to the uh, speaker. Then we discuss uh, how uh, that we really need to cooperate in such spheres as energy, technology, science. But uh, I think that we uh, another step should be uh, should be the discussion how to do, how to do. What is the main reason we know, but how to make this? Uh, how, what steps should we do together? And as a, as a head of, of the school, I have a big experience uh, dealing with our students. And uh, now I, I think that it will be better if we uh, maybe, uh, maybe discuss not only uh, the common questions, but uh, for example, as for the uh, field of the communication, I offer to make maybe a digital platform, uh, such a communication channel through the Facebook or through the Telegram between our students uh, to, um, uh, to inform each other about the research, for example, because our students make some research 
uh, according to the economy of Pakistan. And uh, if our student, uh, if uh, the students of uh, of our universities uh, be, uh, begin to communicate more often through this channel, it will help us to uh, make um, uh, the true of our uh, intentions. And the, uh, and I have some question to our speakers uh, for and proposal. As for the first hour discuss, uh, as for the first hour, uh, our um, our uh, our partner Muhammad Kamran, he uh, he talk uh, about uh, uh, about the human rights. And I think that uh, as a minister as a minister of human rights. Uh, it would be useful and interesting for uh, uh, for make some in uh, invitation uh, some to make some group to create some group uh, between uh, the Russian and Pakistan st uh, students and uh, to uh, for discussing uh, the human for example uh, how uh, the rules uh, of human rights uh, has changed for the uh, for for last 20 years, for example, in East Asia, not only in South and East Asia. I mean that our students are now is interested in the human rights uh, of uh, South, uh, North Korea. And maybe we can discuss uh, how how uh, these rules uh, has been uh, are changing, are changing, uh, are changing in, in uh, South Asia not only in Pakistan, but in uh, region, in regional aspect. Uh, and I have um, some proposal for Ms. G. Mahdi, who, who said about the economical uh, cooperation, and maybe we can uh, make some um, project how, uh, or some vision, uh, what is, or uh, some vision about the uh, corridor, uh, trade corridor between our countries, how to create uh, and uh, what is uh, maybe the scheme of uh, this corridor, trade corridor. I mean, what is the main channels uh, for uh, products exchange and how to uh, improve, uh, how to um, uh, how to make this economic uh, cooperation um, make more effective maybe. Yeah. Um, and uh, these proposals we can make uh, on, uh, we can put on a uh, document and uh, to discuss maybe in small, uh, in small uh, work groups uh, with the specialists who will be represent the government uh, of our country, of our countries. And uh, as for, uh, as for tourism cooperation, I think that it will be interesting if uh, the Pakistan uh, tourist companies may be connect with our uh, alpinism uh, association of Russia and uh, maybe to prepare some interesting films about the uh, advantages of uh, Pakistan nature and uh, tourist um, uh, tourist subjects and uh, it will because um, the uh, the Russians uh, don't know uh, or know, know <laughs> not so much about the Pakistan culture and the, about the Pakistan tourist potential. Uh, and it will be better if some maybe interesting films or uh, interesting videos uh, will be uh, shown uh, uh, through our channel or through YouTube, through our university. Uh, it uh, helps us to make uh, more strong the tourism cooperation between our country because I know that it is um, uh, it is uh, the mainstream in Pakistan yet yeah, to develop the tourism sphere. And as for uh, as for a communication platform, uh, I think that uh, we can ask our Murat and <laughs> yeah, uh, to be uh, to be a moderator of uh, making such communication platform and we will help from our university uh, to uh, to make it. Mm, that's maybe uh, that that's it, it is uh, that that what I would I want to say you. Thank you so much uh, Dr. Vishnikova your comments were really so interesting. So colleagues maybe someone want to answer some of these questions. And now it's a little bit difficult because it's all about real steps, but maybe. 
No. If not, uh, I want to give the floor to our next uh, participants, uh, Mr. Akib. Yes, please. You can ask or command. We can see you where you are. Hello. Oh, can you yeah. hear me? Yes, everything is okay, please. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Wa alaikum I would like. I would like to thank Murad uh, Yahya Amin Khan, Provincial Youth Assembly, and my dear fellows. Uh, I would like to uh, I would like to at some point. I have no question. So, can you hear me? Yes, everything is okay. Please continue. I would like to add uh, some point uh, as my, our fellows have discussed many points. So, uh, first of all, I would like uh, a point about Kashmir. Uh, if uh, we want uh, bilateral relations between Kash uh, Pakistan and Russia, then we will, uh, we will first uh, resolve dispute uh, among Pakistan and India, which is about Kashmir. Which uh, Kashmir is not only threat to Pakistan, but it is also a threat to uh, uh, relations between Russia and Pakistan. It will uh, it will effectively uh, it will affect Pakistan's relations uh, between Russia and uh, Pakistan region with Russia uh, in terms of economics uh, economic because uh, Russia is tending to join the CPEC project and uh, uh, India don't want to um, uh, uh, India don't want bilateral relations between Pakistan and Asia in terms of CPEC. So if we uh, resolve dispute between Pakistan and India, which is about Kashmir, then it will not only secure our economic projects, but will uh, also secure the uh, 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 our society such as Asia, specifically Asia. And my second point is about tourism. We invite our Russian friends uh, to uh, come here in Pakistan and uh, explore the beauty of Pakistan and uh, uh, told to the world that Pakistan is a very beautiful and peaceful country. And we uh, also invite, uh, 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 we also invite uh, uh, visits of uh, every student uh, uh, corporate uh, from corporate sector that visit Pakistan and export their beauty. And my third point is about that uh, uh, Russia should provide uh, internships to uh, Pakistani students in science and technology because there are a lot of problems for Pakistani students in terms of uh, science and technology. If uh, Russia provide uh, uh, if Russia provide uh, internships, then Pakistani students will have opportunity to explore science and technology and set their directions. So uh, I, I hope my points will be uh, included in the agenda of this meeting. Thank you so much, uh, dear Mr. Akib. Uh, dear speakers, maybe someone want to answer. If not, I can give an answer maybe about Kashmir position. No. So in this case, let me be... Yeah, oh, please, you can do it, man. Uh, because I'm a moderator, I should be more natural and without any answers, please. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. It just took me some time to find where I should uh, turn on the microphone. <laughs> um, uh, uh, thanks a lot for all these comments. It's uh, very interesting, and uh, I even didn't expect that we, uh, starting from today, uh, start to think about uh, particular steps like um, uh, like a roadmap uh, to achieve something. It would be a great, great honor for me to be part of this uh, project. And uh, concerning um, some economic development and uh, particular. Uh, steps to to develop the economy, especially in the bilateral trade of economic relations and so on, and the and uh, in terms of the education and technologies. Here things are uh, there are a lot of uh, experience in the world. We can see how other countries uh, solve their problems, uh, bilateral trade issues or whatever. We see that there was the European Union which uh, used to fight against each other for centuries, and then they just came together and decided that they cooperate. 
so th that's why it, uh, I said that the United Nations, when it was found, that one of the most fundamental principles was that we don't uh, don't conflict anymore. We start to cooperate to solve our problems. And um, our colleagues said that uh, in Pakistan, one of the problems is uh, poverty. Poverty, unfortunately, is a problem everywhere. And even here in Russia, we have uh, some part of population living in poverty. We can see here how, let's say, uh, China did. They had a huge construction which helped them to take out of poverty many people and so on. Construction also means that uh, infrastructure and uh, etc. It means access to global markets. You can produce more, sell more, and so on. And Pakistan has around 200 million people population. I know. Basically, it can be the market bigger than the Russian market. So here, I think there are a lot of uh, a lot of ideas can be how to improve this, starting with uh, macroeconomic uh, perspective, uh, financial conditions, uh, and so on. And the last point about the education internships and so on, this is a very nice thing. Uh, I myself once got an uh, internship and I studied uh, in the UK. This is a very nice thing when you can learn uh, the view on science from other countries. But uh, here is also another problem is that uh, it should always go side by side by side with the economic development because here in Russia we have a problem when we educate too many engineers and just, they just go out of Russia. It's a big problem for us uh, because our economy cannot, can, cannot just give jobs to as many engineers as we have. So uh, it's a good point. Uh, education can be one of uh, export, export products of uh, Russia. So I will be very much, uh, I will be very happy to take part and uh, probably uh, I think I, I will have some ideas also to suggest, maybe even some of them will be included. So, and I would also like uh, the, if uh, our uh, organizers, if they uh, help us to share our contacts with each other, or we can do it by ourselves. And uh, uh, finally, I also want to invite all of you to our conferences, which uh, takes place in our institute. We can uh, we can uh, know each other better. So I would like to continue our cooperation. Thanks for that. And I'm ready to share my contacts. Thank you so much, Mehdi. About contacts, dear colleagues, uh, you know our chat is open. You can use this chat, send your uh, mail, and phones, or something like that. You can exchange because it's for free, as I like to say. So I want to maybe, yeah, someone wanted something. Yeah, uh, I'm, I will make him, how to say, a brief comment about the position on Kashmir. So you can read our Russian position on this issue uh, on this uh, website or on the some articles declaration of our Minister of Foreign Affairs. Russia always for a peace resolution for uh, every conflict, uh, even for peace resolution in Kashmir, because Russia tried to be, uh, how to say, not try to be, but Russia uh, attitude for each part, I mean, for Pakistan and for India equal because they are partners with India, with Pakistan. Uh, so now I want to give floor to our next person, next participants. It's Mr. Amas Khan. Mr. Amas Khan, please turn, yeah. Right, thank you, Mr. Murad. And uh, I really appreciate you uh, setting up this whole uh, meeting for uh, both sides, actually. It's, it's not me, it's all of us, your colleagues. True, true. And I'm very happy. Uh, to be part of this. First of all, I want to say um, that I'm a student here at HEC, and obviously I'm currently in Pakistan because of the borders are closed, but I can give from all the lectures I've been taking regarding Russian politics and a few more, I have like sort of a comparative view that I can give. And they're mostly constructive and I'll keep it brief. Um, the first one I noticed was that Russia is in the um, top 30, if I'm not wrong, top 30 or top 40 in the ease of doing business index. And Pakistan is currently at around 70 something. And I went into the uh, details and I noticed that Russia is quite low in import and export um, rankings. It's currently at the 99th uh, position, if I'm not wrong. And 
Pakistan, on the other hand, has also been making a lot of changes, and it has been making uh, quite a few um, legislative legislative changes. So one of the things that I think Russian can learn or you know adapt from the Pakistani experience is to have like a one window business operation for imports and customs and taxes. So one window to uh, deal with all imports and the custom operations. It has streamlined most of the um, import times and uh, export times. It has reduced a lot of problems. So I think uh, one of the, uh, that's one of the things that we can focus on. And of course, both of our nations are highly bureaucratic. I know from experience. And uh, I think if we can break this um, bureaucratic, uh, not a nightmare, but like um, necessities, I would say. It is a necessity, it's part of the due process. So if we can break this cycle, I think we can both improve and uh, learn from each other in regarding the ease of, be ease of doing business. Secondly, like you mentioned, um, we have quite uh, tense relations with uh, India. And I really appreciate Russia's um, diplomatic vigor in almost every case that I've seen. I mean, if there are conflicts in Syria, Russia is at uh, the number one, um, uh, the number one mediator everywhere. In the Middle East, in Asia, and even uh, Kashmir. If you remember last year, uh, Russia was one of the mediators between the February crisis. Yeah. So people don't know this, but Russia is a powerhouse in di diplomacy, and I think we can learn from each other in that regard. And finally, I want to also mention like. Obviously, there's a lot of areas that we can focus on, but I think one specific area that we can learn from Russia is public transport. Uh, public transport will help, first of all, reduce pollution. I think uh, Pakistani public transport is, I would say, one of the worst in the world. It, uh, Karachi was ranked uh, the worst city for public transport recently by Bloomberg, I think, and it has to improve. So I think uh, Russian tra public transport is one of the cleanest in Europe, so it can definitely learn from there. Um, especially Lahore as well, because it's, uh, it has a very high air pollution um, in, on the index. And those are some of the things that I think we should prioritize in our focus. And I think that's all from my side. Thank you so much, Dira Mas. Uh, it's really so interesting, uh, especially about public transport, et cetera, about politics, Russia really try to be a mediator because for Russia, in comparison with our other partners, we are more trying to be, you know, not to make a house, but try to make a peace. Because if the situation will be stable, for example, in Afghanistan or in Kashmir, if there is no conflict in this area, it will lead to cooperation between different nations, between different countries. It will lead to economic prosperity and flourishing of all systems, even political and economic. So thank you so much. Now I want to give floor to our another participants, uh, Mr. Farouk Shah. Mr. Farouk Shah, please turn on your microphone and the floor is yours. Hello, how are you? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you so much to Mr. Speaker, Yahya Amin Khan, the Chief Minister of Provincial Youth Assembly and also to the Russian uh, dignitaries for arranging this good opportunity and to discuss something related to bilateral relations and uh, problems facing by Russia and Pakistan. Uh, uh, basically, Murad, I would like to say that I am a sociologist by profession and uh, I'm doing PhD in sociology. So being a sociologist, uh, the main uh, concern of our is to deal with the social problems of society. and. Uh, we know that the big and underdeveloped country, Pakistan, is facing a lot of problems, which is in shape of poverty, which uh, many of the participants has also talked about. Uh, there are some other problems as well. So uh, actually, uh, Murad, the main point is that we want to have a more uh, supportive approach uh, from Russia and uh, to uh, get out from this uh, bad situation and uh, the problems that we are facing. So uh, I think this platform will really help us to learn from your skills and learn from your, uh, your better steps in order to employ the same over here in Pakistan in order to eliminate the problems which we are facing. So uh, actually, uh, I was a bit late and I joined the session a bit late. Uh, at uh, the initial, I was very much excited 
when I saw the message from our respected speaker, and you will not believe, Murad, I woke up in the morning at 6 a.m. I thought that the meeting is going to be held on 6 a.m., but unfortunately, I was wrong. The meeting was started, uh, the meeting was scheduled on 6 p.m., but this was all the, uh, due to the interest which I was, uh, which I have uh, looking for, because there is, a, that is actually an opportunity to let you know about our problems and to have your uh, master skills or have your guidance and other to uh, cope with the problems which we are facing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Murad, I have also got an opportunity to come to Russia. That was in 2017. I have got uh, uh, a scholarship and uh, started Petersburg University, Russia and international sociology, but due to having some problems over here in my family, I couldn't make it possible to Russia. But Murad, uh, still, I'm looking to work for the betterment of uh, humanity in general and specifically for uh, the society in which we are living because the society has given us too much and return, we didn't give anything to the society. So actually, Murad, I'm, uh, I'm very much curious to uh, work for the, the social problems, uh, not only spe specifically in Pakistan, but in uh, Southeast Asia, Middle East Asia. Uh, so I wish that uh, we, can, we can learn from each other and we can uh, try to help out or support each other in this initiative. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was really important because I believe that we can provide something to it. And you know, there are a lot of uh, numerous international organizations uh, which provide, which needed a person like you. And I hope that everything will be successful. So, uh, and I also, Mr. Farouk, remind me one more issue which outlined by our participants. It's about Russian universities and opportunity to come to Russia to learn. Uh, today we have also with us uh, at the welcoming speech uh, part, the head of the Russian Culture and Science Center. So as you know, Russian government provides a lot of quotas uh, for international students, international citizens to, uh, how to say, the uh, Russian government provides scholarship invite the students to Moscow, to different cities of Russia uh, and give them free higher education. I know that the majority of my friends, I have a lot of friends from Pakistan, not only from Pakistan, from different parts of the world, they really use this opportunity. The only thing that you need to, how to say, to share this information between your uh, young people because you know maybe some about some uh, United States programs like Fulbright or something like that, or State Department scholarship. In Russia, we also have a lot of scholarship like this. For example, uh, the main and the biggest uh, maybe atomic energy plants in all world and company, it's Rosatom. Rosatom provides annually about maybe thousand scholarship for a person from different countries. And frankly, we all have, like young people, all have a lot of opportunities in comparison, for example, with the previous generation, because we are more closer to each other. Thanks to this COVID pandemic, because of course I understand that there are a lot of problems with uh, COVID-19, but you know, now we can speak with you. Now we are more closer to each other and it's really so important. And I hope that everything in our hands, and as my Arab friend said, that uh, may Allah, inshallah, uh, everything will be okay and we can do it. And this platform will provide a great opportunity, a great change, chance to change it. Um, okay. Murad, one thing more. Murad, one yes, thing more, sorry for, yes, sorry yes, for the interruption. You are all free to speak. Sorry for the interruption, Murad. I would like uh, uh, to request you and uh, our respective CM to please uh, uh, devise a group where we can interact with each other. Or maybe that can be uh, a WhatsApp group or uh, based on any other social media platform where we can interact with each other 
and where we will be sharing uh, opportunities, where we will be uh, telling each other about uh, the, the remedies of different problems, or we will give information to each other about uh, on education or health or other uh, sector development or support. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, thank you yeah. Faruka. I would like to respond, uh, Murad. Uh, yeah, yes, please. we definitely are on board for this, and uh, we'll, uh, with the consent of uh, the honorary uh, uh, council generals and everyone, we'll definitely be creating a group uh, where we'll have our leaders as well who can give us uh, good suggestions and uh, maybe solutions to the suggestions, and we'll have the youth as well interactive, uh, interactive over there. So we'll uh, make an official group for this, and uh, we'll be having each and every one knowing each other with it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. CM. And uh, Mr. CM, uh, I would like to uh, say one thing, one another thing, and that is, uh, as I have uh, talked about my scholarship and Murad had discussed about the scholarships Russian government or Russian university is offering. So I request the Russian uh, colleagues to please share all those opportunities uh, and that group by which we can benefit or, or which we can share with our youth to benefit from and uh, uh, go to Russia and uh, try to uh, educate themselves there, try to learn the, 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 the way, the way, the way the man cracks that how and why. We are still uh, being an underdeveloped country and, and what was the reason which made Russia the greatest. So try to uh, learn those things and try to benefit from that and then apply the same on their country as well in order to uh, make pro progress in. Paruksha, we definitely are on board. Uh, we, we, we want to remove these barriers which uh, the youth of both countries have and we want to uh, make each and everyone and make each other aware of the cultures, uh, our uh, landscapes, uh, each and everything. So definitely we'll have a group and we'll uh, surely share our uh, university scholarships. We'll be definitely sharing the, uh, the traveling events we have around over here. And we'll definitely be sharing almost each and everything in that group. And uh, that will definitely groom the youth as well. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sia. You're welcome. So about these opportunities, you can uh, find even our uh, university. We, uh, me, uh, as the head of the School of International Regional Studies, uh, Dr. Vishnikov, we are all from HSC University. It's one of the Russian biggest and top universities with higher school of economics. You can, for example, visit our main pages on internet. It's available in every way. And you can find about admission. Uh, if you will follow these rules of admission, you can find that quotas. Uh, it's not about. It's not only about government scholarship, but it's also about HEC own personal scholarship for most uh, brilliant person for most brilliant professionals. And I think you can use this change, and it will be really great. So, dear colleagues, if you have any questions, Murat, please could, ask, you, yeah. could you switch on the microphone to Ms. D. Alam? Okay. Could you mm -hmm. re read the chat, please? Mm -hmm. But it's you can turn on your microphone. It's not. Yes. And we have one raised hand. Do you see it, Murat? Yes, but it's uh, Mr. Harris. It seems to me that he's also to speak now. Okay, please. Uh, Mr. Metapala, you can... I want to ask you some my Russian code. Yes. Could you please speak more louder? We can hear you. Okay, hello. Uh, can you yeah. listen to me? Hello? Yes, 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 please. Okay, so my question is that I have heard about the Russian youth that uh, if uh, you are uh, uh, 23 years, so uh, like if you are the youth of Russia, so you must join the Russian army. Is that true? Uh, in once your life, you must join the Russian army. And could you, you please, uh, could you please, can you guide me in this? 
repeat your question because there is some connection problems, connection issues, and we can hear. It's something about Russian army, about young people. You should join to army if you would. Uh, my question is that uh, that if, uh, for example, if I uh, I am a I am a citizen of uh, Russia, so it is compulsory for me to join a Russian army once in my life. Uh, I have to serve my army. After that, I can leave it or I can uh, look for another job. Is that true? I have heard about that. I just want to confirm this. So you know, in Russia, for young person, I mean only for male. Uh, you should, uh, it's like obligatory, you should make a service in army. If you don't have any medical, some maybe obstacles, uh, or for example, you are going firstly make your bachelor degree after that master degree and then PhD. If you will uh, take your PhD and after that you will be free and they will give you, how to say, a card that you are not obligatory to make your service. Can I add uh, your Murat's words? Yeah, please. A little bit. Thank you. Um, I'd like to return uh, to your words about uh, changes and about uh, COVID opportunities because uh, uh, to my mind in five, ten years, uh, new wave technology uh, engineers, uh, investors, uh, uh, businessmen uh, should be formed in their world, uh, will be able to create uh, technologies and new products uh, in new markets and new uh, economy uh, and to withstand global both competition and cooperation. Um, NT uh, participates in the creation and uh, implementation of educational programs and courses uh, on technological uh, entrepreneurship uh, supports uh, some movements, so we also have uh, a lot of opportunities. Um, and it is necessary to use uh, successful cases and projects uh, that uh, have already been tested somewhere. And it is necessary to use a strategy of uh, communicative openness and try to involve young people in uh, new uh, communities. Uh, so I want to say it is very necessary to have uh, a new uh, diplomatic and uh, business mind, a new view of our, um, a new view. Uh, so I will send links uh, to the, for our platforms uh, of uh, National uh, Technologies Innovative uh, and uh, uh, we invite uh, you to get um, uh, to to um, take our communities opportunities. I will uh, send links in this chat. Thank you so much, Ksenia. Uh, Mr. Akib, you have some question. Hello. Yeah. Please. Uh, uh, again, I don't have any question, but I will add uh, a point to the conference. Uh, I I want to add about uh, cultural exchange programs that uh, Russia Pakistan uh, should increase cultural exchange programs. Uh, that it will not uh, only uh, uh, help students to uh, engage in uh, some productive activities but it will also help Pakistani and uh, Russian students to uh, interact with each other and understand uh, their culture, their, uh, uh, especially for Pakistani students, it, it will be very helpful that they understand the uh, Russian uh, society and their uh, attention toward their goals. So um, I will request Russian, uh, uh, Russia to increase cultural exchange programs with Pakistani students as well. Thank you. So thank you. It's interesting, really. Uh, I should mention that during the uh, before pandemic, in Russia, Rosmaladers, it's a Russian young people organization that's coordinated from the president office. They provide. They held about maybe five or six international, big international conference in Russia in different cities of Russia. Uh, one of them was a really huge one. It, in 2017, is the Yale Festival, uh, the festival, or how to say, David, are you here? 
No. Uh, we take part. We took part with David in this event in 2017 in Sochi, and we have a really great opportunity. And if I'm not mistaken, it were about it was about more than 100 person from Pakistan, uh, and it was really great. I just uh, want to say that you should monitor. Uh, we can cooperate and monitor these events, and you can join this delegation. Come to Moscow. We will. I hope this pandemic will will end as soon as possible and we will come to Pakistan because we plan to do it in this April, but unfortunately you see that pandemic destroyed all our plans, but we will try it. Yeah, yeah, you want to say something? Brad, the next time, uh, right after the pandemic, uh, we definitely plan uh, student tours to Russia and also the cultural pro program tours. Uh, we would love to listen from you about your cultural dates and uh, the programs. And uh, right with that, accordingly, we'll be uh, making delegates uh, travel Russia and Shah. Uh, so for example, we also have a different organization like your, uh, it's all about maybe young parliament. I think in Pakistan, you also have something like that. In Russia, we also had, if I'm not mistaken, Ksenia, Ksush, this. Uh, are you here? I'm so sorry. <laughs> no? Okay, uh, we have a lot of connection with this organization and just keep in touch and we try to cooperate and to make a real step. So, dear colleagues, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in Pakistan now it's about 8 p.m. Yes? So, I think it's time maybe to sum up our event oh Xenia. Well, I'm so sorry. Uh, yes, okay. you're sure. Um, I ha uh, have a, um, a membership in uh, uh, your government, so I can help from for information or some contacts. Uh, um, I'll send it into the chat so I can uh, give uh, more information. Thank you so much, because for our Pakistani colleagues, it will be so efficient and important. Yes, to we have international Russia. projects. Yes. Because, you know, uh, I don't know how in Pakistan, especially in our deal colleagues, uh, in many countries, uh, the young people, they just really believe that uh, the best places in this world is uh, California, it's America or something like that, or Europe. But frankly, there are a lot of beautiful places in this world, especially Pakistan, for example, or Russia. In Russia, we have a lot of a lot of beautiful places, a lot of history, and a lot of important things to share with whole community in our world. So, Dr. Rishniko, maybe you want to make some closing speech because you are our academic supervisor. And like, thank you very much. It's a great honor for me to have a such fruitful. Uh, event and cooperation and i think that the first uh, step has done and now we really uh be has become closer we understood uh, we have understood uh the real uh ways how to cooperate and i i also have written in chat my proposal to make a special work group uh, i offer you strongly why because i know that it's really work and as a um, as a result uh, of our today's event i uh, propose you to make maybe a, some a document that i can uh, send to our government to improve uh, our uh, intention for cooperation and I think that it was a great idea today. I've heard it about the tourism and education development. It's a really easy, uh, uh, easy uh, the most easiest sphere to start our cooperation because um, uh, the economic, uh, economic moves our world, but it's a very difficult for us, may, not difficult, but it is a long way, but a short way to make closer our countries to start the cooperation in tourism, to make our country from the beautiful and positive sides. 
and maybe uh, uh, and uh, the strong way to make uh, the cooperation in the edu educational sphere. I mean that uh, we can make around tables for our students uh, to uh, to discuss such uh, problems as uh, as trade or, for example, as international affairs, a human a woman human rights, and uh, it will help us to to go to our, our purpose uh, to communicate to uh, uh, to develop the cooperation to make strong our communication and uh, the brilliant idea was to make a special communication channel and today through such uh, leaders as uh, Yahya Minhan from the Pakistan and uh, such leader as Murat and you can really uh, can become uh, the representatives of our countries to improve to uh, to make um, uh, to make our communication uh, more popular uh, to uh, say about it to the representative of our government not only in Sochi but maybe in Lahore in Karachi and in the south part of the uh, of the Pakistan. Thank you very much for your uh, for your re really fruitful cooperation and for your interesting ideas that you uh, told us today. Uh, I think that uh, it will be it would be great if we make such um, dialogue more often, maybe once in three months or two months, if you don't mind, because we can attract more students more uh, young people from Russia, not only from our university or from, or from our government, but from, others, uh, from our other universities and other regions. And if we make such uh, communication, such event uh, in, um, in uh, if you make it often, uh, we, can, uh, show to, uh, we can show to more people uh, the advantages and uh, the the good and um, good sides of our countries to our people. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Uh, my brother Yahya, maybe you want to make also some conclusion speech. Please, um, I, yeah. Uh, Murad, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you guys already have spoken almost everything I wanted to say, and we all are clear in the end that. Uh, these ties, which we have started from today, uh, they, the, the bonds needs to be stronger enough uh, to make it uh, prosperously uh, ahead. And we all are on board. Uh, we definitely, we want friendships to grow. We want our people to understand each other. We definitely want you guys to, uh, to understand our culture. Uh, we want you guys uh, to, uh, to know our language and uh, we want, uh, our students, our youth, to understand your languages. Uh, this is going to make these barriers cross. And uh, with this, we'll definitely be uh, getting more closer to each other. And uh, the leaders, which I have, uh, the youth leaders, they are definitely going, most of them are going to be in politics and uh, in uh, the bureaucracy tomorrow. And they'll be leading uh, the entire areas. They'll definitely be putting a very positive impact, uh, inshallah. Yeah. That's all I want to say. Thank you very much. I have one idea. Maybe uh, we can organize the next meeting with our youth uh, business uh, uh, businessmen and business uh, people who really make a, a, a real business in our uh, country. I think we have such cooperation, a such, a such association, and maybe it will be uh, a good, a good chance to, to start cooperating economic, to, to start For such sure. dialogue with the Russian young uh, businessmen. For sure. Yeah, so dear colleagues, uh, it's really too hard to say goodbye because uh, I doubt that all of us have a lot of ideas. We all open our heart to make our future, to make not only ourselves, but uh, the future of all Pakistani and Russian people, the best one. But we should sum up our today discussion. First of all, I want to thank uh, to Dr. Vishnikova because uh, it can be held without her support. 
uh, without her advices, without had some steps. Thank you so much, Dr. Vishnukova. Also, I want to thank to all my Pakistani friends, uh, especially to my brother Yahya, because he makes the main job, frankly, because today I'm just spoke, I just talk, but Yahya collects the majority of our participants from Pakistani side. Uh, these guys are really so brilliant. It's not only about guys, but also charming, beautiful ladies uh, from Russian side, from Pakistani side. I hope that our today discussion was really so efficient because we can talk a lot, a lot, but we should make something. And we see that this world is changing and we try to be, to make some effective, uh, maybe really useful for everyone in our planet and we try to make it better for all people uh thank you for uh, our speaker because they uh, their speech today was really so comprehensive and interesting and really they touch all spheres of our cooperation they there is no fear between us to speak about some troubles yes and this is why we are differ from our maybe another generation of people because the young people they are more open-minded, they are more creative maybe sometimes, they are more ambitious. And I hope that we will keep it, we will make it, uh, turn it from our dreams into reality. So, dear colleagues, this I want to conclude our event. If you want to add something, please, maybe we have one more five minutes, you can add your words you can maybe comment or something so i hope you enjoyed this evening with this meeting thank you so much thank you so much and to be in touch yes keep in touch with colleagues in this case thank, I you. Will be thank you see you see you the next session <laughs> <laughs>